All right, so um, I just came from the data center. It's, what time is it? It's um, 12.04 Tuesday. And I just, well, like I said, I just came from the data center and did some DC work. And it's been a while since, oh, by the way, hi guys. Um, if you're new to the channel, my name is Dylan. Thank you so much for stumbling upon and uh, deciding to hang out with me. Um, for those who are been following me, thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and give a like um, just uh, just to get that out of the way. Uh, as I've said, oh, by the way, if you notice that it's a new setup in the background, um, this is actually the basement and um, I'm in my wife's office. Uh, this is her chair and... Uh, yeah, but anyway, it's uh, like I said, it's um, midnight. I think the last time I've done a video this late was back when I was in Belgrade. Um, and I was like walking in the street around 12 o'clock in the morning and I was about to start. I was actually on my way to work. But anyway, that's not the, the point why I created this video. I feel like, uh, um, uh, well, I was driving at home uh, I realize I haven't, I haven't shared my story like how I ended up with this job. Um, oh, by the way, if you again, if you're new, um, or if you're not aware, I work as a uh, as a network engineer for an ISP uh, here in Queensland, Australia. So I'd just like to share with you how I ended up with with my job as a network engineer and how it all started. So I used to live in the U.S. So I'm originally from the Philippines, then moved to the U.S., then moved here in in Australia a couple of years ago, and um, obviously when I when I moved here, I didn't move here as a permanent resident. I moved here as a, uh, a dependent. Um, uh, the the one that who's in the process of getting the permanent residency was my wife who's back then was a uh, well, she was my girlfriend back then uh, obviously now we're married but anyway um, so when I moved here I had that visa the dependent visa the good thing about that visa is like I can actually work unlike if you're a dependent back in the US if let's say your your wife or your husband is working as an H-1B. Um, uh, I think their dependent, their adult dependent wouldn't be able to work unless they get an H-1B themselves, I think. But anyway, comment below if that's the case. But anyway, so I was on my way to becoming a PR, but again, that that's another story. So I got here in Australia. Um, had that uh, my visa back then again is a dependent of uh, I don't remember four five seven I think um, so I was looking for jobs you have no idea how many resumes I submitted I think uh, it's the visa didn't it, it, yeah it's good that I was able to um, it gives me the opportunity to to look for a job and to work here in Australia but but since um, I, back then I didn't have the certs uh, and it was so hard to look for a job because I don't have that Australian experience I did have the US experience but for some reason it was hard to look for a job and uh, my very first job here in Australia was actually working in a kitchen for a cafe uh, but that was fine but well if I'm gonna be honest with you guys yes um, it wasn't IT related and I was a bit first disappointed sometimes because I, I, I couldn't use uh, you know the all the education in IT and and all these experience that I that I had back in the Philippines and back in the US so so I re I still remember uh, 
I was attending church and I spoke to the pastor and uh, I told him, you know, it's, uh, he was asking me how I was. And I said, you know, I'm a bit frustrated because I've been living here in Australia for like a year now. I think it was like well, more than a year already. And, um, and I have a job. I'm not happy with, I'm not really, I'm not saying that I'm not happy with my job, but it would have been nice if I get to have work that has something to do with my field, which is in IT. And, you know, I wouldn't, for, I, I would not forget what he, what he said. He said, you know, it's, don't think about what you do, but think about who you are and focus on that one and everything will just fall into place. And, you know, I did not, un, uh, I will admit, I did not get what he meant by that. But eventually, everything just went, fell into place. So... So I think I already told this story when my wife encouraged me to go back to school. And uh, so I went to TAFE, took a certificate course. And there it began my certification journey. Like I've, I've been thinking about certification. It's only when I got into TAFE, I got, went back to school that I, that I decided that this is it. I really need to get my certification, get this done and over with. So yeah, so while I was doing TAFE, I was able to get my CCNA and the following the following um the, the following semester, uh they they hired me. I started off as a student support, uh helping students with disabilities. Uh I became a tutor, then I became a teacher, and during those times I was trying I, I completed my CCMP. Then I said, I, I feel like I can do more than, than just teaching. Uh, I, I want to apply everything that I've learned from the CCMP and just get out there back into, back into corporate. So um, I applied for a job, sent applications again. Uh, yes, I was doing part-time work as well. Aside from teaching, I was doing some some jobs here and there doing deployments doing uh, yeah building computers deploying them and you know, to banks and big companies and i could still remember uh you have no idea i i was in that phase again it reminded me of that time when i was new in australia but this time it's different instead of my application or well, my instead of my resume is getting rejected this time, I've been getting a lot of calls from, from recruiters, uh, saying that, uh, doing that preliminary um interviews, and I said okay yeah, uh then eventually I got so used to it, to the point that whenever a recruiter would call me, be like yeah yeah sure I got to the interviews so I would answer their questions yada yada yada. And um, during this, during the that time again, uh, I feel like I want to go ahead. the The plan for CCIE was already there, because I feel after I passed my CCNP, I feel like I want to go for the CCIE because I feel that this is uh, not really a challenge, um, but I feel like. I could do more and I can go for it and um and and it's just the learning and yes of course the the possibility of you know from what I've been hearing how much they can potentially earn uh I would not lie um but it it was more of um a personal goal for me back then but I did not get you know I didn't have a reason to go for it because I was teaching I was doing uh, some IT work here and there then until one day um, I was somewhere in Maryboro it's this it's somewhere a couple of hours away from the city 
I was carpooling with a bunch of colleagues. We were on our way to Maryboro and I received this phone call and it came from a recruiter and I got so used to recruiters and I was like, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yep, yep, all right, let's go for an interview. And and um, I, I could still remember some of my friend the, the, the colleagues inside the car, they were asking me, uh, what was it? Oh, it's just one of those recruiters. And they were like let, telling me that there's this opening for an engineer, for an ISP. And yeah, sure. Then I think after a couple of days, I, I receive a call. I received another call from a person that's from the company itself. And uh, I was like, oh, wow it's it's um this is actually serious uh, to cut the long story short eventually i did got the job i started off as a level one the level two then now i'm one of the senior engineers and dealing with projects and uh, yeah just like what happened tonight i just came from the dc we're doing this uh, massive upgrade and uh, dealing with NCS. If you don't know what that is, it's uh, a, it's a, it's it's not a PE or a provider edge. It's it's in the core itself. It's a P router that we're trying to put in the core of our network. So, so why, it, so what's the point of me telling this story, or why am I employed to tell to to say this story? What, what I'm trying to say is, you know, during that time of me waiting for that um, dream job, um, <clears throat> I, was, I was doing my CCNA, I was doing my CCMP, I also did my VMware um, and obviously Brocade. So by the time I got this job, uh, I already had a number of of certs under my belt so what I'm just trying to get at and this is probably the reason why um, I encourage you guys to go for your cert uh, but then again I, I, will, I will I will put it out there uh, please don't use stumps because it's you know, if if you if you've done it, I respect you. I still love you guys, but it's believe me. I've started doing interviews, and I've interviews. I have interviewed a number of people, uh, that they say they've they've done the cert, or they have the cert, and but once you start asking them about technical. Once they get into that technical side of the interview, they, they, they just get lost. Um, yes, the cert will 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 put a logo on your on your resume, but it doesn't guarantee you of a job. It it you will get notice. So, in saying that, um, what I'm trying to say is if you're if you're waiting for that dream job, <clears throat> do not wait for the, while you're waiting for that opportunity, uh, build up your skill. Um, because you'll never know when that opportunity will al arrive. Uh, do not, do not wait for, you know, just like this, this, the saying, uh, don't wait to be great. You know, you just you just have to start, and I, I and I think I mentioned this on my other videos. Uh, you need to prep, because once that opportunity, you need to get yourself ready, because you will never know when that opportunity will knock on the, on your door, and you have to be sure once that thing knocks, you'll be ready. And that's what happened to me, and that's the reason why. Um, uh, that was that was my my mindset while I was um, still a tape while I was teaching I never stopped like I still 
kept on studying and that's also the reason why <clears throat> that's also the reason why I would always end my video with 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 me telling you guys to keep on studying be a lifelong learner because I am I am proof of that uh, because it's all it's all worth it it's um, I could just I couldn't explain well I am explaining to you right now or maybe I'm just sleepy but I just feel like before I go to sleep I feel like I just need to get this message out there uh, you don't have to uh, wait for that opportunity you can create that opportunity for you right now if you just if you just study if you just work for it and and sometimes you don't you don't have to uh, be ready for the opportunity sometimes you can create that for yourself right here right now anyway I'm gonna end with that it's already 16 minutes uh, I promise myself it's gonna be too short so I hope you learned something from that, Learn something from my story, and I'm pretty sure um, uh, you might have friends who can relate to this story of mine. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you again so much for, for spending some time with me. Um, as far as the CCIE prep is concerned, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's probably the reason why I'm also sleepy at the moment, because um, every day tend to sp I try to spend at least minimum of two hours uh, especially especially during the weekdays because it, it can get busy during the weekdays with, with work and um, and with other things so uh, I'll, le I'll leave you now with this saying and you probably heard me say this earlier but keep on studying guys believe me take it from me I've been there. I'm experiencing right now. It's all worth it. Thank you so much and have a great day, guys. And uh, till the next video.